<laughs> Hi guys, um, I wanted to share a little bit of my journey with choosing life in the mind and why I'm kind of focusing on that a little bit right now, um, separate from some other things that I'm writing about and focusing on. Um, but I, I think that really the mind, choosing life in the mind is sort of the pinnacle of challenge for us as human beings. It's where it's at. It's where uh, everything sort of flows out of what is going on in the mind and uh, who we become, the legacy that we leave behind. Uh, really all that we are is sort of decided in our mind. Um, so I think it's just the battleground, uh, which is something not new. You know, we've learned that from so many uh, mentors and leaders in years past. And um, so we know that. Um, but still, it's this journey that we've got to figure out. Um, and especially uh, for those of us who are disciples of Jesus Christ, uh, figuring out what that means and looks like um, as a believer. What does it mean? Because sometimes there's this huge gap between, you know, what we believe and aspire to um, as as men and women of God, and then our reality of who we are and how we're living. Sometimes there's quite a gap there, right? And I think it's this uh, journey of learning how to battle and choose life in our minds that makes a lot of the difference and can um, cover a lot of that ground and fill that gap. Uh, so I know for myself, I know I was um, at least a young teen, um, if not even earlier, that I think I started battling depression and I had no idea. I just sort of went with it, but I, I took so much kind of heavy, dark thoughts and kind of buried them deep in my soul and uh, so much um, self-debasing, you know, just a lot of self-debasing. And um, I know that's common with most of us. So many of us uh, have battled that and uh, have done that over and over again in our minds. So those set those deep, deep uh, patterns, right, that we just get stuck in or there for a life that just feels like they're so set in our minds and in our thoughts. And, uh, and then as... Um, you know, as life continued, there there's lots of loss and lots of disappointments, lots of things that happen that kind of wound us, and uh, and and they all kind of sometimes get stuck in our soul, and all that stuff, all those feelings and wounds, and all this stuff and loss, um, that stuff feeds a lot of what starts to happen in our minds, and that uh, which then flows out into our lives. And so uh, for myself, I've had this sort of messy, messy soul for so long. And I've really been intentionally digging into that stuff for, I think, at least 15 years. And uh, for me, a lot of that baggage I had uh, buried deep in there, um, I was 16, 17, 18, um, diagnosed with fibromyalgia. So I it sort of manifested itself, that kind of emotional stress manifested itself in uh, chronic physical pain uh, from a really early age. So I've um, battled that for about 15 years or more. And, and that pain, that circumstantial pain starts to feed dark thoughts and, you know, I'm weak and, and you, you know, that just continues and spirals down. You can imagine or you know and have experienced yourself. Um, and then there's trauma and, uh, and trauma kind of wipes your brain, <laughs> just, you're just sort of, um, destroyed and your capacity to cope. And, um, especially with, um, with the shock in, involved in the trauma, um, it kind of steals away your ability to cope and have sort of a normal, uh, functioning mind that can process and uh, you know just dialogue with all the stuff going on and and come to healing there's um there's so much brokenness that you're just sort of stuck with this mess of all this stuff and uh, you got to figure out you know how do I move forward from here how am I supposed to you know pick up a million little broken pieces 
of my soul, you know, and put it back into something that could ever even imagine being happy again or having any joy again. Um, and I know that, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, people on the outside can look at you, you know, I can have this smile on my face and you guys can all think, oh my goodness, she's so happy, you know, everything's so great. Um, but we can all do that, at least most of us can do that and still have so much pain and brokenness going on deep down inside our soul and all that stuff is feeding our thoughts and uh, feeding those thought patterns. Uh, so that's some of why, so I'm sort of, um, I, I work on this stuff and focus on this stuff out of desperation and, uh, and I have worked hard, really hard, especially the last few years. Um, still feeling like I'm failing most of the time. I have, um, I have this little notepad that I have all these little, just little phrases um, that I sometimes have to just go to a quiet place and sit and read basic truths. Some of them that I kind of repeat as much as I can over and over again is, God loves me, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and I am happy because my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So those are just some of the phrases I kind of, as much as possible, just sort of hide away and uh, repeat those things over and over to myself. Uh, so um, that's a little bit of where I'm coming from as I um, just approach, I guess, kind of dialoguing about this topic. Um, and I want to give a little bit of an overview after, um, after saying all of that to uh, where I'm heading with this and some of what I've learned um, through the Psalms and having David has an excellent, amazing example of a real life person, a real life person with an insane life and real sorrow and uh, real suffering, real struggle, and uh, how, how he was a man after God's own heart and how he was able to continue in that even though we know his life um, still was far from perfect. Uh, so we started with my destination and um, so I'm going to talk a little more about that. Um, I'm going to give you just this quick overview, but it's stuff that I'm going to keep unpacking over the next few weeks. Um, so the reason I think my destination is so important because for me, it's this way of setting an anchor for my soul. And, um, and that has been necessary for me. I'm writing about that a little bit in my book as well and how I had to do that. I had to choose my destination and commit to the journey no matter what it was going to cost. And that was vital for me to get to at least as far as where I am today. Um, so setting that destination is so important and that's what we see David doing over and over in his Psalms when he opens each one, not each one, but so many of them with, in you, O oh Lord, I put my trust. You are my refuge. Um, he just over and over again uses these phrases and he opens these Psalms with phrases like that and it's sort of setting this destination as an anchor for his soul and for his mind. But then we see that he also uh, reminds himself that that's a safe place, that God is a refuge and a fortress. Um, and he over and over again, you know, has to tell himself that, but he's creating that awareness in his own mind, uh, that realization and memory that, that God is a safe place. And then because God is a safe place, he then can bring an honest an honest awareness of what he's really wrestling with in his soul. So then he brings all the junk, he brings all the fear, all the hatred, all the suffering. He can bring it right to the Lord in his presence. And that's so important. It's so necessary. And sometimes it's the very last thing that we want to do with the stuff we've got going on. But it's all that stuff that's feeding all these toxic thought patterns that really mess up our lives and our relationships. So we set this destination as an anchor for our souls. And then um, we have to know and, and then remember and remind ourselves that that is a safe place. And then we bring this honesty 
in this raw honesty and this awareness of what really is going on deep down in my soul. You know, am, why am I angry? You know, do I have hate? Um, am I so disappointed? You know, and that's loss and grief. Or are there sinful desires at work that just, you know, I don't want to give up. I don't want to give up that stuff that I'm convinced makes me happy. Um, so there's all that stuff that we have to become aware of. And so there, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, I, I hope, and uh, some different categories and how to deal. There's different things that we have to deal with differently um, when we get into that stuff deep in our soul. And um, so then we're moving from there. Then we've got to decide. So this is where it's so important that we've set our destination because then we have to decide, okay, if it's this or this, that this is how we need to move forward. And, uh, and we can do that as we once again remind ourselves that God's a safe place. And we move through that with him and we come back into his presence in such a beautiful and a powerful way. And all of that is choosing life in the mind that uh, results in the fullness of joy, um, so much freedom, and uh, the blessing of living in the presence of God and having his unconditional love and knowing it, being secure in, in his love and in the safety and refuge that he is and his provision and protection over us and all that good stuff. So it is quite a journey. And for me, it is a daily, it is hard work every day. Uh, for me to sort of follow through with this pattern and I I fail most of the time I'm still a total mess so <laughs> um, you can join me in that and feel totally safe that you guys probably all have this down better than me um, but I would I'm looking forward to the next few weeks and um, I'd encourage you all to be in the Psalms and um, I'm excited for what God's going to continue to do in me and speak into my life. So uh, this video was a little bit long and uh, hopefully I'll get better at that. But uh, blessings to you all and I'll talk to you soon.